Rakata Yahawa Malaka Walam Hagadah Alahayam of our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaqua, the one and only true Elohim who created the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. Halal Yah, Halal Yah. Abba Yahweh, we just come to you now, humbled Abba Yah, seeking your face. In reverence, Abba Yah, to your majesty, your power, your love, your grace, and your mercy upon your people, your children, Yisrael. Thanking you, Abba Yah, told our Rabbah for bringing us through the week, Abba Yah, bringing us together on your set apart day as you commanded. And as we go into our culture and heritage and language study, Abba Yah, we just ask that you bless us with your Ruach HaKadosh and guide us that we will receive the truth and be blessed, Abba Yah, with knowledge, wisdom, and above all, understanding what it means to be Yisrael, what it means to be your first begotten. Please, Abba Yah, inspire more Samak and all that will edify your word. Let it penetrate our lebs, Abba Yah, and that we could put it in action in our daily lives, Abba Yah, all to bring praise, honor, and glory, to shine light on your majesty. In all things, Abba Yah, we give you thanks. Toda Reba Abba. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name. Halal Yah. Aman wa Aman. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. All right. All right, so we're going to say Shabbat Shalom, everyone, Shabbat Shalom, and we're going to jump right in today um, so we can try to cover as much ground as we possibly can in this little segment that we have. So we're going to be picking up uh, for the Hebrew readers to get your practice in. We're going to be starting with the uh, book of Deborah, comedy called Deuteronomy chapter six. We'll be starting at verse four. So uh, if I could get the first reader to uh, raise your hand so we can get the volunteer who wants to read. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go through some of these verses real quick, and then I'll go into some more of the understanding. So I have a first reader on board. Who hand is that? All right. By yet, Francis, the floor is yours. We start with verse four. Let me take this down so I can see the screen now. All right. Right here, verse four. Uh, we're trying to get a split. Shabbat shalom, everybody. First, I want to give praise and honor to the most high and also honor to my ish. Okay, um, verse four. Shem, well, I mean, I know this one, but I'm, a, <laughs> okay. Uh, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Verse five. Okay. Wa a ha beta et. Or is that eight? No, that's eight. That's eight, but a lot of times, rather than eight, 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 U bekal na feska na feska u bekal me o deha. Yeah, good read. Good read. Good read. All right, who we have up next? All right, Nathan, you'll be starting at verse six. Give me a moment to move the screen. All right, verse six, uh, Nathan. Oh, is I. Um, waha, waha u, ha, debarim, ha, 
Ha'ele Asher Anoki Mitz Mitz Uka Hayom Al Lebabeka. Hallelujah. Good job. So I'm going back. So uh, just in short, Mr. Bakai, uh, if we can start trying to kick, take some of this to memory. So in our culture, one of the uh, very first uh, things that's of utmost importance is for us to understand the commandments of the Most High. And here is before the children of Israel went into the land of Egypt, Shrika, into the land of Canaan, which is commonly called Israel now. Before they went into that land, again, Moses was given Israel the commandments before entering into the land, telling them the things that they needed to do before entering into the land, as for their days to be prolonged along the land. So after all the commandments were given, he's now uh, stating to them, he's recalling the commandments to them, but he's also wanting them to be clear on one thing. So it starts off here, Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Akkad. One reason why we're doing this because we want to make sure that what's written in the Hebrew or in the Hebrew is what's actually in the English or get the best translation as possible. So right here, we know the Lord was not written here. The Lord is uh, is a title. Um, and uh, the, what they're doing is substituting the Lord here for the name that's written here, which is yod hey wah which is when you see the yod hey wah that's actually the name of the creator. So the reason why we would say Shema Yisrael Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echad so it says here, Israel, Yahuwah, Eloheinu. So Elach, Elach, Eloach here, or Allah, Eloheinu makes it our. Okay. So this ending is making it our, our, um, uh, our Elohim, which mighty one power, commonly translated as God, our power, our mighty one, our God, Yahuwah, Echad, Yah is one. So it's letting everyone know that what he's letting everyone know is they just came out of the land of Egypt. And in Egypt, there was many gods, but this Shema, what is letting Israel always remember, there is only one God. There's only one power, the existing one. The name here, Yod, Hey, Wah, Hey, comes from the root word, Hey, Wah, Hey, which is uh, uh, where well, it comes from, uh, Hey, Yo, Hey, but uh, this is another rendering of it, which is going to be Haya, which is to be or to exist. So the Most High, the existing one, the existence himself, brought everything else into existence. So he is the true power. He is the true God. He's the true Elohim. So what Moses is doing here after they're coming out of Egypt once again is letting them know that there is only one God. So here, O Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Okay, Echad. So now that he stated this to them, because uh, when we read up further up in verse one, he's letting us know that the Most High just delivered Israel out of the house of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, right? So then we have. So uh, this conjunction here is joining this thought together. So this conjunction here is joining uh, Ahabata and Ahab is the root word love. So Ahab or some may say Ahab is root word love and love, who love? The top on the end is making it, turn it back to the you love. And you love, or you shall love, it does not translate into English. It is pointing dot direct, it's a direct object, it's pointing to what you're to love. So I have to eat Yahuwah Elohecha. You should love Yahuwah, your God, your power, or your mighty one, which is the reason why the term the Lord is not necessarily a negative thing the way some Hebrews make it. It is not negative to say the Lord, it's not negative to say God. However, we need to know who our power actually is. And uh, and he has a name. So therefore it's letting you know that there are many mighty ones, yes, because a man can be considered a mighty one or power or a ruler. But he's letting us know, you shall love et Yahuwah Eloheka, not the Lord, because the Lord could be anyone, but we need to understand that Yahuwah, our Elohim. And again, we have Eloach here, or uh, Eloach here, and then you have uh, Eloheka, which is making it your God, your mighty one, and your power. Uh, Bakal uh, Lababika. So we have here, with all uh, Lababika, with all heart, Labab, Leb or Labab is heart, Lababika, with all, and the cough on the end is making it your, with all your heart. Ubekal 
again, uh, this is a conjunction that's joining the same thought together, Ubechol, and with all, Nefeshcha, Ubechol, Miodecha. So with all your soul, with all your might, with all your being. So it is to be understood that the Most High delivered us, the Most High gave commandments, the Most High is the only one, that is the only one we should love, the only one we should respect, the only one we should honor, and we should do it with all of our being, all of our might, all of our heart. So we should love him. And as I came, Yaquab touched on last night, we should keep the commandments because we love him, not because we're looking for a blessing, but because we love him for what he's already done for us. He, he brought us into existence. Be thankful for that. He feeds us on a daily basis. Be thankful for that. So it shouldn't be, what am I going to get from him as to the reason why I'm trying to keep these commandments, but because I love him because he calls us his sons and daughters. So he's looking at us as children. So the love that we have for mothers and fathers in the flesh, that's all he wants from us now is for us to love him like we love a parent, you know, but with more love than we have for our parents. So moving on. Um, uh, and these words, the root word here is the bar, direct object pointing to, and the word yom, mem, in, ending on the end is making a plural. And the words, these, it's going to be these, I share, which anoki, anoki is personal back to the most high, which, uh, which I, Mitzvah Ka, uh, so as we was covering, we have lost that commandments, but uh, Mitzvah Ka, which I command you, Mitzvah is the root word, the Ka on the end is a suffix added, Mitzvah Ka, Hayom al So uh, all these words, which I command you, Hayom, um, the day, which is making it now a specific day, which we translate into English as this day, but the root word here, yom, is day. Hi yom is pointing directly to this day specifically. The day that these words are being spoken to you, these words which I command you today, this day, um, uh, should be upon al lababika, should be upon your heart. So again, um, we're going to start doing the Shema on a regular basis because we want everyone to get to the point of when you're doing your prayer that you can learn it in English, but also learn it as well in Hebrew and try to understand it from the Hebraic uh, understanding of the words that you're saying. So that when you say Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Akkad, take it one line at a time and just be able to identify each word in the text. Shema is here, understand, obey Yisrael or Yashra'ah, whichever dialect one uses. Here, Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Akkad. Learn one verse at a time. And after you get that first verse, then you go to the second verse, but you want to be able to not only do it for repetition, but actually know the words that are there. That's going to help you build Hebrew vocabulary and start writing this on the on, a, on the tables of our heart. So this is what he commanded the children of Israel when they were uh, before they were going into the land of Egypt. So I'm just going to go in English right now, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou lie, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou rise up, and you shall bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates. So he's letting you know that these words that are spoken are of utmost importance. So if we want to understand uh, for our cultural portion, as we've already covered, the Torah is a very important part to our culture because written therein is actually our culture and our history, right? Within the Torah and Tanakh. Um, we talked about the Shabbat or the Sabbath day, which is very important to our culture. Why? Because that is the day that is set apart, that is culturally unknown between the Most High and Israel. And it is a sign between the Most High and his children, right? And based upon if we're keeping it or not keeping it, is that in the Most High, if we're actually accepting or we're growing or walking towards his covenant. So our culture actually begins with the Torah. Our culture actually begins with the Most High himself giving us directions and instructions. And because our culture was somewhat lost when being in so many captivities, and we're going to go to the beginning uh, or of the Egyptian captivity is what I'm focusing on now. Give me one moment. Uh, this bar is in the way. We're going to now be jumping to Exodus of the book of Shemot. Uh, Y'all give me a second. I'm trying to move this bar back out of the way. Right, there it is. 
All right, so now we move to the book of uh, Shemot, uh, Exodus, chapter 20. So Hebrew readers, where you at? We're the volunteers for this. So what we're going here is that we're going to see that um, the culture is beginning here because the Most High is bringing Israel out of Egypt and he's reintroducing them to the culture they should have been walking in. He's giving them the government, the rules, the principles that he wants them to go by. And as we've already read um, prior to, or what it was already said prior to um, where we went in Deuteronomy when Moses was giving them uh, the final uh, re- calling of the commandments we know everything is for us how we dress how we should eat how we should worship the days we should worship all that was written therein so when he's saying Shema Yisrael he wants to hear and understand that all these commandments we're supposed to keep so the culture is taught within the Torah itself okay and it had to be re-given coming out of Mitzrayim or coming out of the land of bondage was considered Egypt so I see by it Francis you had your hand up so we start with verse uh start with verse one Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we switched computers. Okay. Um, let me move closer. Okay. Why ya da bear Elohim eight at eight kal uh ha de barim ha ele le le I'm more. Right. Very good reading. Very good reading. You've been practicing. All praise to the most high. Very good reading. Yeah. All right. Uh, whose hand is up next? Uh, Koti Shaquan. Anybody else that wants to read, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Even Kier, if you want to read it again, you can raise your hand. Uh, what I'm not going to do is uh, tear and be waiting for a really long time going forward. We're going to start getting it. So whoever puts their hand up and wants to practice, that's how we're going to do it. So hands up for those who want to read. All right. So okay, I'm gonna try this one. Um, I I know Keith. Wah, Yahawa. You gotta excuse me. Um, Elo Elo Heka. I share. Ha, uh, ho, no. Yes, right, ho. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ho, ho, they, ho, they, ta, ho, they, ti, ka. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Ho, good job. Ta. Good job. You may do a big giant word. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. May. Nah, that's the S. So, Mena, that's that's not me. <laughs> yeah, you said it right, but I'm saying it's time to go because you used the sound. Start to go. Okay, okay. Um, May, eh, mm -hmm. oh, May, eh. Rets, Mayor Rets. Mm -hmm, good job. Mm -hmm. Me, uh, me, uh. No, there's no uh there. You add the uh. There's oh, no uh there. Okay. You have me, to meet right. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm getting confused because I, I know that's a silent sound and that's uh. So the two sounds. So when we're gonna pick back up on the language portion, we're gonna be picking up on this vowel here, the shiwa. Sometimes it's silent, sometimes it's pronounced shortly, and sometimes these two sounds may join together. So these two are gonna somewhat solidly join together. Okay. Uh, so this, that's more of a silent. You're not really pronouncing the vowel sound under this. So this sound is gonna to join to this sound. Okay. Me da. No, no, no. It's not a da. Oh. Yeah. oh, me ra. No, no, that's not a ra. No, you still have to join this sound together. You're skipping it. Okay. The sound is going to be solid. It's going to be the vowel. You're not trying to put a vowel after it. 
So if this represents the T or this represents the S, you still want to connect the S sound to the uh, the me sound to give you that syllable. So there's still a syllable that comes after the me. So you have meats. So I'm gonna give it that until you meats. There's meats. No, no. Oh, no. Meats. Oh, okay. okay. Meats. Ra. Mm -hmm. Oh, meats are rim. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, meats are Me. Bet. Me bay. Me bait. Mm -hmm. Good job. Mm -hmm. Abba da Abadam. Mm -mm. We got the vowel sound it. Oh, Abadim. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. Good reading. Good reading. Hallelujah. Uh, All right. Yeah. What other hand we had up? All right. Uh, praise the Most High. So uh, I'm gonna uh, let Nathan go first, and then I'm gonna go back to uh, by it Francis. So um, that was verse two. So Nathan, you pick it up in verse three. Elohim Akarim Al Pana Panaya. Okay, so uh, uh, so they have Panaya here. That you right? They have Panaya, but we normally say Pana, Pane, or Pani. So we we just talk about this later. But that was good. But what they have here is Panaya, as you said. Yeah. All right. Uh, and by it, Francis. Um, uh, 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 more. Uh huh. Uh, I, um, Scriven's family had his hand up too. I don't know if it dropped off or he took his hand down. Okay, yeah, it dropped off. I, I didn't see it when I pulled the screen back up. Okay, so before uh, by it, Francis, uh, Scrivens, if uh, if y'all wanted to read, uh, you're up next in verse four. All right, I don't hear him. Um, are you still online? I changed my mind. I'll let them go. You say you change your mind? Yeah. All right, the sister changed her mind. So we're gonna let Bayet Francis go again. And to me, next week, I, I'll make sure I have a special verse for you, for, for you to get it. Okay. Okay. Um, it's hard to see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> four. <clears throat> low. Ta asha no se ta ta se mm -hmm. um leka pesel no pes pe mm -hmm. you had it right you had it right okay pesel um wakal temoni no temona temona <clears throat> temuna mm -hmm. A share there. Um, ba Shamayim, Ba Shamayim. Which is? Um, in the heavens. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Mi Ma'al, um, Wa Asher, Ba Aret, um, Mi Tahat. Mitahat Wa Asher Ba Mayim Mitahat La Aretz. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good read, good read, good read. All right. And Shaquan, I'll let you get verse five. It's going to be the last one that we're going to read. And I have a quick edification that I'm going to share. And then we're going to. So Shaquan, if you want it, verse five, verse five is yours. Okay, we're gonna try this. Low, um, low, ta, 
No, no T. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Loti do lo she ta. You started over. You started over then. Yes, I did. Okay, so low R. No, let's, let's start from the T. So I'll be with you. Okay. T. Sh. T. Sh. T. Sh. You good for right now? Go go ahead to the next one. Ta. Ta. Ka. What, what, why? Okay. I need some help, Maury, for this word. This one is. You don't, you don't need help with the word. I just want you to sound it out. So okay. you're trying to focus too much on everything else. But we, right now, I'm just trying to get you to focus on this letter and this sound. Okay. Where? Uh, yeah, it's, you know what I'm saying? The, the rules are not changing. It's, it's when you're trying to worry about sometimes the syllab syllabification of the word. Right now, mm -hmm. we're still trying to get used to the sounds, recognizing the letters and things like that. So none of us are going to be 100% in the same sound because uh, like when Kiara was saying it sometimes, but she realized it was eight. Sometimes they have it pronounced, they have it written eight. Sometimes they have it. So sometimes I don't actually correct certain things because generally we always use it uh, in most, clay, most cases. So some of the words with the pronunciation and because we didn't go over certain rules, I'm not expecting you to fully know how to sound it out. Just as long as you're recognizing you're trying to apply the rule. So once we move on forward, you're doing good. So don't worry about uh, don't worry about that. And that's not a word okay. that you're gonna be familiar with right now anyway. Okay. Um Lahem. Lahem. What wallow. Mm -hmm. Wallow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no. Ta a ma ta a marine. No ta a madin. Ta a ba. Ta a ba. Deem. Not deem here. Look at that. It's two dots. Ta a ba deem. Key. Mm-hmm. I uh, I know key. Mm -hmm. Why? Oh. I don't know why yours. The why? I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Yo hey, yo hey, yo hey, why hey? So I sound it out. Yo hey, why hey? No, that's not how you sign it out. That's what it is. Okay. Your old Y is the letters. That's not how you sign it out. Your, your Hawa. Your Hawa. Hello. Heka. Hello, Heka. Mm -hmm. Eight. Nope, it's not the tip. Man. L. Mm -hmm. Okay. L Ka uh, Ka Na. Mm -hmm. Good job. Is that a Po? Mm -hmm. Ket. Mm -hmm. uh, po Ket. Mm -hmm. Uh, I own, I own, mm -hmm. uh, oh my God, I'm sorry, uh, I boot, 
Mm-mm, not ooh. Oh, uh, uh, boat. Mm-hmm. All. Mm-hmm. Bano, bano, no, banim. Mm-hmm. L, all. Mm-hmm. She. She lay. She mm-hmm. lay. She. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, wa wa ow wa ow. Um, <clears throat> re re bay im. La see was okay. Now that's two dots. Is that Loso? Mm-hmm. Okay, Loso. The Lasona, Lasona. Mm-hmm. Good, good reading, good reading. If everyone oh, would okay. please Hold give on. her uh, some hand claps on the screen, please, Mr. Because some hand claps on the screen for all of the readers. They did an outstanding job. Those are some big verses, some big words, and some sounds and syllables that they didn't have to do yet. Like I said, the pronunciation they get better as we go. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking to encourage and for you to make the attempt. Y'all did a, a great job, the doll, great job. All right, so uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna jump right into this. So uh, again, when we're speaking on our culture portion, what we're gonna find out, which is very important, is that the Most High started off when he brought him out of Israel, I mean, out of Egypt, and he spoke all these words saying, I am Yah, your Elohim, or your God, your power, your mighty one, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So he's identifying himself as the deliverer that delivered them from the land where they were held captive, when you were crying out, I'm the one who heard you, I'm the one who delivered you from that bad place where you were bondage and all of the negative things we know happened there, the killing of the babies, so on and so forth, the hard labor, the Most High said, I'm your deliverer, I'm your God, I'm your power. And verse three, which is very key to where we're gonna be going for our study today, it says, you shall have no other gods before me here we have Loch Yihye Lakha Elohim Acharim Al Pane um Panayah is what they have here. Panya, um we pronounce it different ways. So he's saying lo, uh don't uh, do not uh yihye, yihye. This looks a lot like the father's name, but it's yihye. Do not have creator, do not have lacha to you, Elohim, God's mighty ones, um, Elohim Acharim, uh Akhar. Uh, the root word is akar, but we have here akharim, which is going to be others, plural, uh, al before uh, paniya, um, before uh, before my face. So I don't have any other gods before my before my face, which is before me in my presence. Don't let me see your heart. Don't let me see you aligning yourself or giving credit to any other god. I'm the only one. I'm the one that did this for you. So just love me and respect me is what the Most High wants from His children. I delivered you. The least you can do is already appreciate that. So going back to what Zakane Yaquab said last night, we should not be keeping these commandments to try to get something from the Most High. We should be keeping these commandments because we love him and we're already thankful for what he's already done. So he's like, I delivered you. I've already blessed you by delivering you. You should have no other gods before me. And with that being said, you shall not make unto thee a graven image, nor any manner of likeness, of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So he's letting them know and do not even associate or try to build anything because we know they actually tried to build the golden calf. We know there was other images that for one, people was used to associating images with God or the most high because of being in these strange lands such as Egypt with many gods and they always had some type of symbol to represent the many gods that they serve. So the Most High is trying to renew the minds here and take us back to the cultural understanding of a Yah mindset as Israel. You do not have many gods. I'm the only God and you should not even make any images. You should not bring many gods before me or any other God before me and do not make any graven image of anything that's in heaven above or in the earth beneath or under the water. Or the, or the, or the, or the, or the water that's under the earth. 
So don't even try to form any image that you think is of me. I don't want, um, and this is only for the sake of, uh, for learning purposes. So he says, don't make the mention of other gods out of your mouth. But there are symbols such as that the church utilized as the fish. That represents Dagon, that's the fish god. So there's all these different things that people are making images and putting them to their religious beliefs that we should not do, okay? So he said, don't make any images of any likeness of a, a, a graven image, nor any man of likeness of anything that's in the heaven above or is in the earth beneath or that's in the water under the earth. None of those things will be the most high. You cannot make a replica. You cannot make anything. And I don't want you bound anything because it's not me. Even if you're trying to associate it with me, it is not me. I don't want you making any images. That's not how you come before me. You come before me with your whole heart. You come before me with the spirit of obedience and do as I ask you to do, saith the word of the most high. It said, you shall not bow down unto them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, or your God, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So not only should you, shall you not make them, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. So when we get into the time of the year that we're in right now, um, and we go to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, it's going to be telling us about not bowing down to other gods and in reference, there's one in reference to a tree that's decked with silver and gold. I'm not going to go into those details now, but that does not totally go with just the Christmas. We use it to be able to show where some of the origins of the customs of Christmas come from, but that is not focusing totally on Christmas. That is focusing on something that we don't know that's been associated with Christmas, and it's a false idol worship. So that happened way before there was ever an existence of any Christmas. There was bowing down before trees and bringing gifts set among trees unto Nimrod because his mother was trying to keep him alive and trying to keep authority alive, and the way she was getting riches was by making people think his spirit dwelled in the tree. Another topic for another time. So all of this thing, don't make any images and don't bow down to anything or anyone that any man or woman or child is telling you is something that you're supposed to bow before in reference to the most high. Do not let your hearts gravitate towards any of that foolishness. Just do what I command you. I don't care how righteous it may appear, how righteous it may seem. Thou shall not bow down unto them, nor serve them for I, Yah, your Elohim, and my jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And then he says, of course, he's going to show mercy unto thousands of, of generations of them that love him or love me and keep my commandments. So the way we love the Most High and the way we worship the Most High and the way we honor the Most High is by doing what he asks of us. Whatsoever he commands us and how he commands us, that's how we should do. So we don't need to make some image and bow before it to let the most I know how much we love him. We need to let him know how much we love him by understanding and respecting his view. I don't want you bowing to no image. Just bow before me with a humble heart, with your head to the, or the ground, your hands spread towards Shemayim, and pray to me. Reference me. Know that I am. Know that I exist and I created all, and none of that stuff is me. So make nothing. Make nothing. That's what the most I want. But what do we do today? We create ways of worship. We create things that appears to be righteous. And again, I'm not trying to make offense to the uh, churches in general, but even in our culture and our custom, there are still people that have false images up that they reference as the son of the most high, which we should not have. So no image. So in the churches, you know, they have the, the, the false pictures of, of, of so-called, as they use the term Jesus of, to represent the son of Elohim. He said, make no image angels and all these things uh in the roman catholic church you have all these so-called saints and these statues that they go in and they rep saint so-and-so saint so-and-so they have all these people that's up as statues and they go and bow before these things and paying homage to the most High say don't do that he hates that stuff he hates it and so no matter how religious and ceremonial it looks the most high is disgusted with that stuff because his word tells us not to do it. So that's going to be the short cultural portion for the day, because I want to start here because the lesson we'd be going into uh, for the service today, we're going to be focusing on idolatry. So the point that I want us to see is from the very beginning of culture being reestablished to Israel as the most high was bringing them out and giving Moses the words to command him, 
One of the very first things he established was who he was, what he's done, and he's the only God. Don't have any idols. Don't create any idols. That is one of the main and first things that the Most High expressed by way of giving commandments to Israel is to not have any idols. Then he goes on down the commandments, give him more, but reference him as the only with no image associated to him and don't make any type of image to worship. We worship the most high in spirit and in truth. So what we see here is that with this short culture portion that from the beginning of him trying to restore culture, he was trying to also tear away or break down a mindset that we develop from being amongst other nations of always trying to associate an image or an idol as something to worship or to bow before. So he already said that culture we need to lose and we need to come back to the culture that he wants us to come to. And it is set apart Yah mindset that is written in his laws, statutes, and his commandments, commonly called Torah. With that, I know I said a lot in a fast time. I hope that everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I will be referencing back to this as we go through the lesson today. But again, it's very important that we understand culturally as we're trying to return to the most high that we must tear down all graven images. We must do away with all of them. And any false way of worship that we've ever taken in, no matter how right we thought it was, no matter how my grandma said it, my mama said it, uh, we've been doing it forever for generation to generation. If it does not line up with the word of the most high, what he did when he brought them out of Egypt was he told them to stop worshiping like in Egypt. And we got to do that today. We have to stop worshiping like in Egypt, the way others worship, the ceremonies that we want to do. If it's not anything the Most High commands us to do, it doesn't matter how good it looks and how long the ceremony takes. If it, if Yah is not in it, Yah is not in it. So we should not make any graven image, nor any man of likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You or we shall not bow down unto them nor serve them. For Yahuwah, our Elohim, is a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them, thousands of uh, a generation of them that love me and keep my commandments. So when the Most High looks in on this generation, or whatever generation he looks in, there are going to be those that hate him, and he's going to deal with them, and it's going he's going to show mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So again, uh, for those that are saying the laws are done away with, and the Most High is going to be looking for people that love him and keep his commandments to show mercy unto, let us make sure that we are laboring to keep his commandments in the return to his set-apart way, return to the past of old. With that, I give all praise and esteem to the Most High, Barak, or bless his Kodash name. I hope that portion was well edified, even though it was a quick session. But to the Hebrew readers, y'all did an outstanding job. All praise uh, uh, be to the Most High for your diligent study. Praise y'all. Uh, Zakane Yaquab, I now yield to you, sir. Uh, to, to blessing.